editor of the online archive Ubu Web, and the editor of I'll Be Your Mirror, the selected Andy Warhol interviews, which is the basis for an opera called Trans Warhol, which premiered in Geneva. A pr an hour-long documentary on his work, Sucking on Words, Kenneth Goldsmith, premiered at the British Library in 2007. For many years, he was the host of a terrific weekly radio show on New York City's WFMU, and he teaches writing at the University of Pennsylvania, where he is the senior editor of Pen Sound, a remarkable poetry archive that I urge uh, you should all check it out, Pen Sound. Alison Knowles, in addition to being a poet, is a visual artist known for her sound works, installations, performances, publications, and association with Fluxus, the experimental avant-garde group formally founded in 1962. As one of the founding members of Fluxus, she produced what may be the earliest book object, a can of texts and beans, called the Bean Rolls, in 1963. In 1967, she produced the House of Dust poem, possibly the first computerized poem, 1967. Uh, she expanded the scale of her book projects with The Big Book, an eight-foot-tall book of environments organized around a spine. So you can see the kind of creativity that she brings to the project of making poems. So if uh, Alison Knowles and Kenneth Goldsmith would please come to the stage, we would love to hear from you. Is Jessie here? <laughs> hi, hi. Say she has to come. Oh, okay, and my daughter into this wonderful house, and she made it. Oh. <laughs> and if, if I could just, I just received a signal um, that um, our first lady has to. Oh, doesn't have to go. Okay, carry on. I misread my signal. <laughs> All right. Okay, terrific. So, Kenny. I'm, I'm so glad you can stay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually like to extend uh, what Billy and Rita said, but take it from a slightly different angle. Um, I'm actually interested, uh, for my students, I teach a class at the University of Pennsylvania called Uncreative Writing, where they are, are penalized for every, any shred of uh, creativity or originality that they show. As a matter of fact, <laughs> These kids surreptitiously know so well how to uh, plagiarize, how to, how, to, how to be fraudulent uh, by creating and copying, cutting and pasting, but it's always on the down low. In this class, I say, no, you must do that, and you must be accountable for those decisions that you're making. So, in other words, I want you to bring all that stuff that you're doing underground, I want you to bring it up to the surface, and you become accountable for what you're doing uh, and why you're doing it. What are the decisions that you're making? So one of the things that I first have them do is I have, uh, I give them a very simple homework assignment. I say, retype five pages of your choice. And I, I leave the room and they go, oh God, my parents are really wasting their money here <laughs> at school. And they go home, and I don't say anything else, and they kind of struggle with it. And what they come up with into class the next, day, the next week um, are all deeply personal, original pieces of writing without them having really written a word of that. Okay? So the question becomes, what did you choose to retype? And why did you choose to retype that? And you get wonderful personal stories. Uh, one girl said, well, I retyped uh, five pages of a short story that I thought was great when I was in high school. But now, having retyped it, I realize that it really isn't that great. <laughs> OK, so there's, there's learning. Other students begin to realize that writing is a physical act. It's a bodily act. Because when you're doing something so dull as retyping five pages, you start to notice the cramps in your hands. And you start to notice that your legs are getting a little bit numb. You realize that you have a body when you type. And that, and that writing is a tactile. Writing is sculpting with words. It's an extremely tactile experience. And you know, we tend to forget about this. We tend to be so concerned with the sorts of uh, things that we're saying. Now, I think that writers, all of you, you try too hard. I say, 
that you need not try so hard. You need to just make better selections about what you are taking. Now, um, I say to my students, you may never have writer's block in my class because the whole world is yours to type. Now, of course, you're all on the web and you can cut and paste. Now, this is a very, very powerful tool. I mean, you know, you don't actually have to retype anything. You can just cut and paste the entire works of Shakespeare and somehow manipulate it and represent it and, 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 and justify those representations. This is an actual new tool that we have and the web is nothing but language. Miles and miles and miles and miles of language. I never want to hear that you have writer's block with the cut and paste ability uh, of, of the web, please. You know, please, you can't say that. Um, so um, with that said, I also, um, my whole practice, uh, I've written 10 books of poetry and I haven't written a word of them. I'm a transcriber. I listen to things and I retype them and just exactly what Billy was saying. Uh, I think the best way for our young writers to learn how to write is the way that our young painters learn how to paint. You go up to the museum and you set your oil and canvases up in front of a, a Van Gogh or a Rembrandt and you replicate that. Uh, uh, I, I, was, I was teaching at Princeton a couple of years ago and one of the uh, students came up to me and she was, very, she was studying with one of the most prominent fiction writers in America, but she was very frustrated because she was given an assignment to write a paper in the style of Jack Kerouac, write a piece in the style of Jack Kerouac. And she's like, you know, I really can't do that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Facebooking and I'm chatting and I'm, I'm doing all this, I, this is, you know, how do I do that? Uh, and she was very frustrated, and many of the students in the class were frustrated. Now, I think had she actually gone and retyped Jack Kerouac's On the Road, she would have learned a lot more. Again, and, uh, you know, ab about Kerouac's style. Why be imitative when you can actually uh, copy it directly? <laughs> and I think actually this is, this is not so different from what you were saying. I just call it uncreative writing. And I think it's, we're really both getting at a way of different ends of what creative writing really means. Now, I'm just about to finish up, but I wanted to share with you some of my books. I am the most boring writer who has ever lived. I'm famous for that. My books bore me so badly, I can't read them. I fall asleep when I have to proofread them. As a, uh, they're, they're horrible. I mean, to tell you, this is, a, this is a book called Day, and I retyped one day's paper uh, from the New York Times, from the very beginning of the paper to the very end. The stock pages alone, now of course they don't do stock pages anymore, the stock pages alone are 300 pages. It took me a year and a half to type, retype this newspaper. But I have to tell you, it was transcendent. It was beautiful. I mean, I looked forward to it. It was meditative. One of the most fabulous year and a half I've ever spent. And I came up <laughs> with a 900-page book. Now, I want to just say that this is the greatest book that's ever been written. Of course, I didn't write a thing. I didn't write a word of it. But it's got love. It's got pathos. It's got war. It's got passion. It's got uh, victory and defeat. You know, it's, it really is. This was, uh, uh, this was a very slow news day. It was, a, it was the Friday of Labor Day in, in September, uh, in, 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 you know, for the, the Friday of Labor Day in, uh, in September of 2000. I mean, I picked a nothing day. I didn't want a dramatic day. I wanted a boring day because I'm a boring writer. But it really is, uh, I want to just say that, too, the newspaper is um, a novel every day, and it's written 900 times every day around the world, or 9,000 times, who even knows? And we throw it away and we write another novel the next day culturally. I mean, this is, this is fabulous literary production. This is real. And so you just simply take something and you reframe it and um, it becomes literature. It's very easy. You're trying too hard. <laughs> Um, I would like to read from, is this turned on? I would like to read from.